Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Monday morning to you all. Hope you guys are having a great start to your day, great start to your work week. Got you an update on what is likely going to unfold today for most of the U.S. Uh, there is going to be a little bit of a sneaky tornado threat for areas of the northeast. There's going to be a severe weather event for areas of the northern plains, and then we're going to break down uh, the crazy heat for areas of the middle of the country, like the and including the south central U.S. and just the entire central U.S. This extends all the way up into the north central U.S. and the northern plains where we have excessive heat warnings actually all the way up into pretty northern areas. So we're going to break that down for you guys. If you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. If you got anything that I can pray about, pray over. Please put it in the comments below. It gives me an opportunity to pray over it and it gives others an opportunity to do so too. Thank you all for praying for my wife. She's feeling better this morning. Going to take another day uh, to kind of rest up and get her strength back and then hopefully everything will be back to normal. Um, here uh, by tomorrow but hit me up on social media it's a great way to uh, stay up to date especially when things get much more active twitter facebook if you're active on both it's a great way to stay up to date for sure so let's get rocking this morning water vapor loop shows what is going on here we got an upper trough swinging into the northwest this is going to promote the severe weather in this portion of the u.s today and there'll be a lot of severe weather that is likely into canada also that you know we really can't see they have their own uh, criteria of alerts and things like that and then we have a positive tilt trough right here positive is when these troughs dig down like this like this one is doing neutral is when they kind of dig down like this and then a negative is when they dig down like that and when these things are negative that's when these systems are very dynamic we've talked about this for a while if you've been watching for a while the dynamics of negatively tilted troughs are uh, much more aggressive and they cause a lot more cause of concern uh, for areas normally they can produce a tornado outbreak very dynamic conditions so um, we don't have that of course today and typically we don't this time of the year but uh, this is a pretty strong positive tilt trough right here and this will actually help promote um, enough shear to have some rotating storms in areas of uh, interior northeast today into into the interior areas of the northeast so we're going to talk about that we're going to see who could potentially see what? There's also a little bit of a severe weather threat for areas of the um, deep south today. So we'll break that down too. So let's get rolling. Right now, this is as of right now. Okay, so this could change. And this is why I know I'm saying it like that. You only have a marginal risk for the northeast today. And, you know, I keep saying interior northeast, but this extends down to the I-95 corridor to New York City, Boston, uh, you know, Baltimore, Washington, D.C. areas. Um, a lot of areas, a lot of heavily populated areas could see some severe weather today. But I do think, you know, don't hold me to it, but I do think there will be a slight risk introduced inside this marginal risk sometime this morning. Now, it might be an hour or two after I make this video, but uh, I would not be surprised if somewhere gets upgraded to a 5% chance of a tornado and a slight risk. But you got this marginal risk for severe storms down here in areas of Mississippi, northern Alabama. And then bordering the U.S. Uh, Canadian line, you have a severe weather threat up here across the north central U.S. and the northern plains with an enhanced risk for this small section right up here, right against that Canadian line. Tornado risk, a 2% chance right now for this area. But a lot of times you don't see a 2% chance inside of a marginal risk. So it really tells you what's truly driving the severe weather risk is the, tor is the very small tornado threat. But I'm telling you, I do think this gets upgraded to a slight risk this morning, and then you'll have a 5% risk somewhere in here. So I'm just mentioning that if you guys are watching this video around 11 a.m. noon, and uh, you're wondering why I'm giving you wrong information, I'm just giving you the latest information as of 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, the wind threat, you know, just a 5% chance down here and down here, 25 miles in the given location of 50 to 60 mile per hour winds. But up here is the big time wind threat. You got a 15% risk of that same criteria, but you also have a hatch risk, which is the black outlined area. That is also a 10% risk inside the 15% risk. You see winds uh, pushing 65 knots or higher. That is 70 to 70 mile per hour winds. Hail threat is definitely massive up here. You got to watch out for large hail up in this region a 30 percent chance to see one inch or diameter hill 25 miles in given location and then a hatch region which is that 10 percent risk risk to see two inch or diameter or larger hail 25 miles in a given location we look at the excessive rainfall outlook and not a big deal today but we'll watch out for philadelphia baltimore washington 
Um, we'll walk all the way up to New York City, you know, uh, eastern, uh, western areas of Long Island. There will be a slight risk of flash flooding today. That is at least a 15% chance of flash flood guidance being met. So whatever the criteria is for your area right now, then you just got a pretty large marginal risk where, you know, if you had just happened to get a lot of rain and a storm, you could potentially flood. So be aware of that because there is a risk for flooding today. Now watch as a warning. Stick with me, guys. I know y'all are wondering probably, what, you know, what is my area going to see as far as storms? I'm about to show you this here in a second. But look at all these heat advisories, um, excessive heat warnings in the pink, heat advisories in the orange. Excessive heat watches are in the dark red right here. Uh, it just tells you the day is going to be hot almost. All, well, it's going to be hot all the way up into the, to the Canadian border. So um, it's going to be very hot in Dallas today, probably pushing 110 degrees in certain areas. I think certain areas will hit 110 degrees. It's definitely likely heat advisories extending into Arkansas, Louisiana. Um, just a brutal day, a brutal hot day. You know, somebody made a video around uh, Weatherford, Texas and showed their backyard and, it, and him just walking in his backyard. His entire grass was crunchy, it was brown, and uh, it just everything just looked like toast out there. Everything was burnt. So, um, I mean, I don't know what to say. I hope you guys get some rain soon. I really do, praying for you guys out there. Um, let's check out this system. So we'll take a more broad look at the entire areas in the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast first. And what's going on is this system's ejecting across this uh, upper trough that's tilted positive here. This will continue. This is bringing um, a lot of rain already to areas of uh, interior New York State, areas of Pennsylvania, extending all the way down to Kentucky this morning. Um, this will continue. And as we get to past lunchtime into the early afternoon hours, some storms will begin to erupt across Maryland. PA, interior areas of New York State, even maybe a storm or two in Mass or New Hampshire or Vermont will continue to move this forward here. And here's these storms. These storms in Massachusetts, um, these storms embedded into this light rain that might be the case, might not, into New Hampshire, Vermont, these little cells, they all have that kidney bean look to them, meaning they all look like they kind of have like a little bit of a hook to them, which tells me just based off face value and look at these models that these storms are going to have a chance to rotate. You're going to have some shear in place. Um, the wind profiles aloft are going to be supportive for some support for some uh, rotating updrafts. It's something we really need to pay attention to because I do think we're going to have a few tornado warnings today. I do. Uh, but these storms kind of start to uh, kind of ooze into the, uh, the Delmarva area, the Washington, D.C., Baltimore area. Uh, they start to enter a, eastern PA, but then you have storms back here also kind of along the front, but all these storms right into here into this little sector of warm, humid air, I mean, then it shows a bunch of little mini supercells into this area of uh, New York State, Vermont, New Hampshire, Mass, and these will continue and might maybe congeal into a line, but I'm telling you, I, I definitely think this area is going to get upgraded into a slight risk. I mean, look at this into uh you know new england there is a lot of storms that look to just have that look to them you know we've talked about this before when they kind of have that little hook to it um to me that symbolizes that hey these storms are going to probably be uh, rotating we get a little bit closer look at pennsylvania and then surrounding states and moving forward here just a closer look here's one big storm showing up south of harrisburg you know maybe around three or four o'clock you got some storms entering Maryland out of uh, northern VA, which could have that severe weather threat today. These continue. These might kind of more so congeal into just a broken line of storms. Watch out Allentown entering around 4, 5, 6 p.m. These storms will begin to knock on the door of New York City probably around rush hour, uh, maybe a little after. And then they will continue to move through. And Philadelphia might get hit pretty good a little bit later this afternoon. And then Atlantic City, Dover, uh, probably getting into areas of maybe a little bit overnight, around 10, 11 p.m. once the sun starts to go down. I think these storms start to move in after the sun goes down for these areas. We move a little bit further north, and this is kind of the area I want to watch out for. Once we get rid of the morning rain, the morning convection, how much does that sun come out for these areas? That's something you need to pay attention to if you're up in New York State, Eastern PA, um, uh, Massachusetts, uh, Vermont, uh, New Hampshire, uh, Connecticut, the sun comes out, I really think the tornado threat definitely increases. But even even before that, I mean, you know, you're getting into, uh, you know, 
you're getting into around 7, 8 p.m., you know, even before this, this is around kind of mid to late afternoon. I'm talking about 4, 5, 6 p.m. Um, all these storms could be rotating right into here, Rutland, just south of Birmingham. I mean, uh, Burlington, I'm sorry, Burlington could certainly see some rotating storms. All these storms, not all of them, but some of these storms will have a chance to produce an isolated spin up. Tornadoes are certainly rare the further northeast you get in this region, but they're not impossible to happen, I tell you that. But we need to watch out for these storms. They all kind of have that little look, hook to them. And even as you get into uh, New Hampshire, which I don't have a panel pulled up for this, um, you know, what, what's concerning about once you get up into these mountainous regions of Vermont and New Hampshire is they look like they're embedded into rain. So that's certainly something we need to watch out for as you might not see these coming. But down uh, back here to Syracuse too, Binghamton, you guys could see a severe storm or two, maybe a tornado threat. Not necessarily, I'm not predicting a tornado for any individual area. But I'm just telling you guys, these storms could, could spin. Do not be surprised if y'all have some tornado warnings today. A lot of rain between now and tomorrow morning. Um, over an inch of rain is certainly possible for the interior areas of the northeast to higher elevations. Uh, but once it gets a little bit further south, where the convection will be more isolated to scattered, not everybody's going to see rain, but it certainly could be a rainy a lot of people could see a lot of rain, you know, included with this severe weather threat. But let's move to the southeast today. Um, not necessarily a quiet day. There's going to be an area of storms that probably develops somewhere in Tennessee. There'll be scattered convection in Tennessee, down in the Mississippi and Alabama. Uh, these could produce strong to severe storms. That's why you have that marginal risk for this area. And then just afternoon showers and storms for the peninsula of Florida in the Panhandle Big Bend area. And then these storms could eventually kind of ooze their way into the Carolinas as we're starting to get into 7, 8 p.m. So maybe some storms around Greenville, Atlanta, uh, maybe a little bit later this evening. But uh, I'm not expecting a very active day. Just to, These storms are going to be kind of lifted up from this upper trough, but lack of forcing will uh, just kind of make for this to be combined with the front, but with just daily afternoon convection and things like that is certainly possible. So uh, moving forward here, we'll go into the north central U.S. And I do think it's going to be active up here also, um, but really only for this sector of the northeast. But there is going to be a strong storm or two up here in the northern sections of Minnesota, very far northern. Like look at this little lone cell in northeast Minnesota. This storm could be pretty intense, but, you know, trying to figure out exactly where that's going to develop as anybody's guess, but that's why they have a slight risk extended all the way into this area right into here. Strong storm or two a little bit later tonight, certainly possible. Then we'll watch this complex of storms entering North Dakota that could certainly produce some nasty storms. Uh, the south central U.S. today, it's just going to be hot and you're going to be begging for some rain. The only areas that could potentially see it is maybe here in eastern areas of Arkansas, northern Mississippi, where you guys could actually see a little bit of severe weather action a little bit later today. But unfortunately, there's not really going to be a chance of rain for Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas today. You guys are just going to be brutally hot and dry. Hopefully, we, we can get something to knock you guys out this pattern uh, before it gets, you know, it's already dangerous for some folks before it gets, you know, life-threatening for some areas. But um, the Northern Plains, this is Montana, North Dakota, a uh, big strong upper trough will erupt some big storms across central Montana early this afternoon. These will work their way into eastern Montana and kind of just tail whip into North Dakota as you get into the evening hours. These will have a small tornado threat, but the biggest threat with these will be large hail and damaging winds. And these storms can be intense, guys. They won't be talked about much because they're way the heck up here. But I'm telling you, these 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 storms could really produce some severe weather, then just scattered convection all through these regions right into here. It's going to be very hot today, guys. It really is. Um, you know, this is the National Weather Service, so it could get hotter than this. But, you know, Dallas, Fort Worth, 106, 107 today. Oklahoma City pushing 100, um, you know. But, I mean, look how hot it gets all the way into South Dakota, all the way into Montana, this all the way into eastern Wyoming, eastern Colorado hundreds all the way up into these regions it just tells you how stubborn this pattern is once you get locked into these heat domes it is extremely hard to get rid of 
it seems like the longer they last, they, the more like the roots get dug into us. I don't, I don't know how to explain that, but it's like the dryness attracts the heat draw, dome. I'm not saying that's a thing, but I swear it just seems like it is. But just brutally hot temperatures for Texas, I would say, you know, probably 80, 90% of the state will probably get above 100 degrees a day. And then the, it will ooze into Arkansas where it will be very hot too. But Missouri, maybe not as bad today. But the further southwest you get, the hotter it gets. Shreveport could hit 100 a day too. The rest of the, <clears throat> sorry, I'm losing my um, losing my voice. The rest of the U.S., central U.S., it's going to be cooler a day in the northeast. That is the only thing that might limit convection. In fact, I think that's why they haven't really upgraded this to a slight rest because they're wondering what the morning convection will do to the temperatures. Will you have any kind of intense surface heating today? If the sun comes out at all in the northeast, I think the severe weather threat increases big time. There's a lot of people in the weather community talking about this threat today and about how it could overachieve. But the southeast, especially the further east you get, pretty warm, typical summer type conditions, a little bit cooler across the mid south, um, the Ohio Valley, where you're, uh, you know, the influence of the upper trough kind of has cooled y'all down, but very hot across the areas I just mentioned. Basically, the further west you get, the hotter it gets. But that's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless all y'all. Stay safe out there, especially in the northeast. And if you live in any of these small towns up here in the northern plains, um, I should be with you guys this, um, this evening. I know I haven't made an evening video in quite some time. It's been a very busy last seven or eight days. But God bless all y'all. Have a great Monday, and I'll talk to y'all soon.